let's uh, get into the texturing stuff, right? We gotta start at some point. So uh, let's start with the ground. The ground is uh, our most kind of defining feature here. Because all these buildings in the far distance, I mean, I might just kind of just give them like a crazy simple, um, just a flat, dark texture, and that might be enough for what we need. But, uh, but the ground, we're going to see what it is, right? So uh, I'm going to use Quixel Bridge and see if I can find some... I mean, I'm not going to find something that's like this kind of orangey red, for sure. But maybe there's something that I can find that's a good base for this, and then I can um, maybe do some color correction on it and uh, get it to be a little bit warmer. We want surfaces. Soil. Sandy soil? Is it sandy? Um, I don't know, I'm just gonna basically look around here and see if I can find something that's kind of, I don't know, interesting, I guess. Like, I don't, I don't want anything that's too pebbly, right? I mean, this doesn't look, I don't know, maybe it is pebbly, I don't know. Yeah, this is kind of cool, red gravel. I don't know. Could be interesting. What is this? Rocky ground. Rocky ground could be kind of neat too. Let's get some of this red gravel. Let's let's see. For my download settings, I want 8K is cool. We're gonna need a lot of resolution, especially if we're gonna cover a lot of ground. Uh, I don't need ambient occlusion. I do want albedo, I don't want JPEG, I want an EXR for everything. Just the XR for displacement. I don't want normal. Because 3D lights, it's so efficient that you might as well use the displacement and not the normal. I do want the roughness though. So roughness, displacement, and albedo. So Icelandic red gravel. And it's just it's just gonna do its thing. Uh what else? Uh, dry mud floor. That's kind of cool. I like that. So may maybe what I can do is I can use two or three different textures to kind of differentiate between kind of this surface and this surface. Um, so, I don't know. I'm going to grab this guy too. Dry mud floor. Same thing. 8K, albedo, displacement, and roughness EXR. So I'm just going to Click download this guy too, uh, and now maybe something dark. Well, I like this. This is cool. This could be neat for for this kind of section right here. So this is sandy beach rock, two by two meter. Uh, let's grab this. Uh, albedo displacement roughness. Grab this too. Uh, I don't need this. I want to go back to Houdini. All right, here we go. Back into Houdini. Uh, all right, so let's go into the materials. Uh, 3D light, material builder, and I'm just gonna call this ground. Ground for ground. Okay. So we got our little terminal thing, which is our basic, our output. I'm just going to put a principled node in here, wire that into the surface, and uh, let's assign it. So render ground, just going to go into render settings and go into my material setting, ground, accept, good. Oh, and we crashed. See you in a bit. All right, and we're back. Sorry about that. I knew it was going to happen sooner or later, right? It's Houdini. <laughs> it is Houdini after all. All right, so the first thing, uh, let's start with uh, this. Um, so these are the three things that I picked up on Quixel Megascans. One is this uh, Sandy Rock Beach. One is the red gravel and dry mud floor. Let's start with this guy. Um, 
So, uh, back in Houdini, I have the albedo for this particular texture, and then I have a displacement, a roughness, and a preview. So, albedo goes into the color, and let's fire it up. Let's fire up um, 3D light and see what we can see. Uh, I'm also gonna, we're in IPR, I'm just gonna set this to disable some stuff that we don't really need right now, such as, uh, I'll leave the atmosphere for now. I'm gonna set the resolution to half for now and the sampling to, I don't know, 25%. Let's make the resolution full. We're, we're not that super crazy high res, so. Let's fire up the IPR. Uh, just so that I don't get confused because we're getting into the texturing portion of our project, I'm just gonna remove this background because it's um, it's kind of confusing me. So I'm just gonna put like okay. So yeah. So this is uh, oh this doesn't look like much. You know why? Because I don't have any UVs on my ground. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. I'm also going to switch to my work cam. I'm going to switch to my work cam because I want to have like a little bit better sense of what the layout of my ground is going to be. So let's do that. I'm just going to board the IPR right there. I'm just going to say I want my work cam right now. Hit render again. So now we have this point of view. And work cam, I'm gonna hit the lock button so I can kind of move around and take a look at what we got. So, uh, however, before I get all crazy, and because we did have a crash already, I'm gonna stop the IPR for the time being. And I'm going to go into my ground and Let's give it some UVs. So, start with normals. So it doesn't have any normals. And I think UV project is what I keep telling people that works just fine for grids. And if we do a visualize UV, scale this down to one. We got, we got stuff. Okay, cool. We got UVs. Go to the null. Call this out. Highlight this. And be done with it. Yeah. So, alright, now we can fire up the IPR and see what we got. Uh, let's, let's do a couple of things. First of all, we're just working on the ground, so I'm just going to shut everything else off except the ground, so turn these guys off, we don't really need to see the buildings just gonna make things go a little bit faster and then I'm gonna crank the environment light up again so that we can see what the hell we're doing okay so here's our ground right you guys can see this? yeah, okay good uh, so it doesn't look like much right now Except it's got this texture on it. Not very exciting. So let's do stuff to it. Let's, um, well, first of all, let's label stuff. So this is our albedo. Command option. I want to uh, bring in my roughness, right? And I want to bring my displacement. Okay, cool. And let's just call this sand for so that we know what the hell we're doing. Okay, so roughness into roughness. Did it change anything? Maybe. It did stuff. I don't know what, but it, it did something. 
And then uh, the thing that's probably going to make the most difference for us is going to be the displacement. So let's pump that into our displacement normal bump value. But see now it looks crazy. That's because it's set to bump map. It's confused. So I'm just going to set it to displacement 0.5 centered. It's, it's going to take like the lighter values and push them up and it's going to take the darker values and push them down but try to keep like the the grid roughly where it is so bump displacement uh what if we pump this up to a lot more about like 10. yeah now we're kind of starting to see things happen to our geometry can you see it let's let's make it like crazy like 50. Right. Um, the reason why I need to make it crazy right now is because our grid is so huge. It's it's really like just a massive um, area that the UV uh, is being spread across. So, so because of the size that we're dealing with, which remember it was like a five kilometer square grid. Uh, my intensity values need to be really, really high right now for me to see what's going on, but but it's not going to stay this way because also right now we don't we don't have any uh, UV repetition. I mean, we are dealing with this um, AK texture, which is nice, but if I get really close to it, uh, you're going to start seeing that it doesn't look so nice. I mean, it look it looks kind of pixelated, right? I mean this. We don't want that. So we need to change that and the way we're going to do it is uh, let's start by adding some uh, repetitions to this thing. And in 3D Light we have to create a UV node just like in um, Octane and just like in Blender. Redshift guys don't need to do that because Redshift has got UV size tile repetition built into the texture node. So uh, There's pros and cons to both. Um, I actually have learned to appreciate having a separate UV node to control the UV transform, the, the scaling and rotation of the UV map, because then you can kind of plug it into however many textures you want, and, uh, and then with just one setting you can control, I don't know, 20 different textures if you want to and in Redshift because every texture node has the UV um, size uh, repetition scale ro rotation all that stuff built into the texture if you change one you have to go through and change all the other ones which I think is kind of not great okay so let's plug my UV uh, into our three maps that we have and right now nothing happens because um, I have it set to one so we're not changing the scale at all but if we set it to five now we're gonna start seeing some difference and you know of course we're seeing tiling but I'm not too worried about it right now at this particular stage for a couple different reasons and I'll, and I'll tell you why when we get there. Um, I think I want to go even higher. Let's go 10, 10 and ooh. Hold on. 10 and 10. So we're getting a lot of repetition. By the way, uh, 3D Light's got this really really kick-ass feature uh, which all renders should have, but they don't, which is basically built in, um, what's it called, texture bombing, if you guys are familiar with what that is. So check this out. Um, to me, like if this is not like a selling point for 3D light, I don't know what is. So um, let me see, I'm going to make the lighting a little bit less bright, so maybe we can kind of see the repetition a little bit better. So check this out. I have tiling right now, right? Because I mean, I'm basically repeating uh, my uh, uh, textures 10 times across and 10 times high, 
because that's what I have here. Uh, and it sucks. I mean, especially if you're doing like an aerial shot, this is not what you want to see. I mean, it looks all crazy and artificial. But, check this out. I go to my uh, albedo texture. Actually, I'm, I'm going to unplug the other two for now, just for simplicity's sake. Um, hopefully you can still see the tiling that we're having. Maybe. Uh, I'm going to make it even more obvious. I'm going to go to 50 and 50. Can you see this? Probably not. Let me stick like a color correction node. I'm just going to make it like really contrasty. Contrasty. Bring the saturation down. And... A really, really crazy contrast thing. Bring the gamma down. Alright. How about that? that? That should be obvious even to... On the YouTubes. That we have this crazy... Crazy amount of tiling. Maybe we don't need to go that crazy. Okay. Uh, so this looks like shit. It really does. It's terrible. However, check this out. We have a tile removal function built right into our texture and if I click this guy look at what happens automatically it kinda generates this kind of noise sort of pattern and automatically kind of rotate scales curves and does all sorts of crazy stuff to our texture here let, let me get rid of the color correction so you see like the the final product and all of a sudden even though we are uh, you know, we're using a huge amount of repetition. There is no tiling visible. Isn't this cool? I mean, this is like one of the coolest things ever. I don't know why all renders don't do this. But to me, like, 3D light, just for this, kicks ass. Um, let's enable it on my tile removal here. And I'm going to put it on my displacement as well. And so we bring the roughness and the displacement back in. Yeah, with the, with the displacement you can see it a lot better. We're basically... I'm going to make the displacement really crazy. I mean, there is no tiling. I mean, I can't, I can't detect a, any pattern whatsoever that would give away the fact that, that we're tiling the texture. At least not... 20 times across and uh, and the benefit of this is that if I go like really really close with a tile removal enabled we can get like really really close to our texture and we have all the resolution that we want and we don't have to worry at all about you know uh, any sort of perceivable repetition the only thing it doesn't like uh, is um, at least at the moment, I know they're trying to fix it, they're working on this. It, it doesn't like when the displacement is um, also using tile removal, I think it kind of wigs it out a bit. So for right now I'm just gonna leave it as is with, with just the tile repetition because we're gonna use some additional ways of blending textures together and we might not really need to use, like we, we might not really need to worry about tile repetition. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Let's let's bring in some of the other textures. So, I'm gonna go back to bridge. So we have this sand texture, that's what we're using right now. Then we have this red gravel, and then we have this sandy beach. So, uh, let's do another principled. And this is gonna be called sand beach. Okay, and I'm going to bring in a texture, and this is going to be our albedo, and I'm going to point it to Sand Beach, should be somewhere in here. Where is it? Sand Fine, Sand Beach, 
right? X is the right one. Yeah. Cool. Is that a larger preview? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we want. So this is kind of like our dark kind of colored. So we want to bring uh, the albedo, and then we want to bring the roughness. Roughness. All right. So this is called displacement. Okay. And I'm gonna point it to our displacement. Okay. Cool. Cool. Let's bring this terminal down here so we can see what we're doing. So albedo goes into the color, roughness goes into the roughness, and displacement goes into our bump value. And then we just gotta change this to displacement. So if I switch this and I go into our terminal, uh, our IPR, it's going to do a couple of calculations because uh, 3D Lite needs to convert everything to its own binary file format, just like Arnold does. And Redshift does it too, except Redshift just saves it to the cache. But anyway, so, uh, so this is what we have. And uh, it's cool. We're already starting to see some cool stuff happening. But, uh, but just like in the other texture, I think um, we like one single tile spread out over five kilometers is not gonna be pleasant to look at. So just kind of UV nodes uh, 10 and 10. And I'm also gonna increase the displacement by five. There we go. Sometimes you just gotta restart the IPR. It's true. So we got displacement. Okay. But we also got repetition. Tiling. Uh, I can go even crazier. 15 and 15. No. Let's do 10 and 10. Okay. So basically we have this sand texture. The displacement is not updating. I should, I should tell that to the 3D light guys so that they know that this is what's going on. So we have this sand texture and then we have this uh, beach, uh, sand beach texture. Okay. And let's bring in our red, our crazy red sand. I'm going to go back to bridge, just so I know. Red gravel. And what's it called? Ground gravel. Alt click, option click. And I'm going to call this red gravel. And I'm just going to, for right now, I'm just going to get rid of these guys. And I'm going to point this to. So if I pump this into my surface, refresh my IPR. So I'm going to pump this guy. Let's start with 10 and 10. OK, so uh, we have our red gravel. And, um, and I just want to be able to basically use some sort of mask to differentiate between these three different textures and see if I can get to something that looks kind of cool and, and somewhat like organic looking I guess because right now it, it doesn't look organic at all it looks very very repetition-y I know you guys probably can't tell from looking at this uh, at this shot right here but if you could see the resolution that I'm seeing you'd see that it looks like crap Okay, so uh, 3D Lite gives us a layered node, which basically allows us to go uh, to layer these three different textures that we have. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to use some sort of noise or, or some other kind of something to, uh, to kind of mask the different textures. So I'm going to bring in a texture map, okay, 
And let's call this uh, mask one, or let's call it like top mask. And what I want to use as a texture file is I have some, uh, they're, they're basically just like this kind of, um, here I'll show you, like this, this kind of like noisy sort of math, you know, like textures that you can, they're kind of grungy. But even something like this, something like this would work, I think, for one of the masks. Uh, let me show you. So, I'm going to bring this into the top mask. I'm going to, um, just so that we can kind of see a little bit what the hell we're doing in general, uh, I'm just going to create like a new principal node. Okay, so if I take this top mask and I put it into our color, you'll see a little bit like, uh, we should see exactly what's going on here. So we have this, uh, um, our texture, our kind of grungy texture that's just kind of mapped over our surface, but this is going to be great as a mask, okay? So this is, um, this is going to do the trick. Um, what I do want to do is I want to put like a remap node um, on it, and actually I want to pump this into the inputs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, remap node, and I just don't, I don't need color information, I just literally need grayscale values. So I'm just going to use these guys to basically make it a little more contrasty. See, I can kind of adjust things like this. Um, I don't know exactly what, how contrasty I needed to make it, but, uh, but I'm going to, this is going to be a starting point. And I'm going to start with my um, first sand texture. And I'm just going to put this out here. And we're going to go back to our repetition y, very tiled texture of the sand that we had to begin with. And then uh, I'm going to put like the sand beach into our middle layer. Here, let's move this guy out of the way. So, uh, out color, and this is going to be in the middle layer. And nothing is going to happen. And the reason why nothing is happening is because um, right now there's no masking between, there, there's no mask that's telling 3D light, it's like, hey, um, I want to see both layers, right? Right now it's just, um, it's literally like the top layer is not being masked by anything because I don't have anything in this mask input right here. So let's put the mask into our top mask and we should start seeing something pretty dramatic happen. So if I bring this guy up, okay, so we're, so basically I just need to adjust our remap or as Redshift guys know it, I need to adjust the ramp. That's all it is. So basically, uh, as I bring this value lower and lower, you'll see what's happening is that now we have uh, some portions of the sand that are um, being um, masked, and so we can kind of see the layer below right now. So if I make this, the, the, basically the, the lower I bring this guy, the more sand we're going to see. Um, which is kind of cool, and immediately it gets rid of a lot of this tiling that we were running into, which is, you know, the, the number one thing that we want to be able to address here with, with, by using these three different textures. I can invert my texture, so now, um, let me see, so now we, we should have the inverse, and if I bring this guy up, well, I can do that. Um, it, de it depends a little bit if I want the sand to be the more prominent, um, you know, element or if I want the, this darker texture to be the more prominent element. Um, and in this particular case, I think I want the sand to be the prominent element. Well, I don't know. Maybe I don't. Just gonna option click. 
on this guy. Let's reset this for now. Uh, and I don't want to invert this, but I want to bring a different. I want to bring a different uh, noise texture, different grunge texture for this. So I'm just gonna pick something else. Uh, let's see. This could be interesting. So uh, let me zoom in a little bit as we're starting to make a complete mess of things. I don't need this this guy. I can put aside. Uh, so this is going to be our middle mask, okay, with our remap node. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to, here, let me just kind of, what a mess this thing is. Alright. Just trying to make a little more space. So now I'm going to put the red gravel in our bottom layer like so, and of course we're not going to see anything because we don't have any mask that's masking out the middle layer so that can show us what's below it which is the... so uh, let's pump this guy into our middle mask and now we're starting to see something right? I don't know I think this is where we need to go to our main camera so we can kind of have a rough idea what the hell we have made with this insanity. Poof! Look at this! I got a different shirt on. It's because it's a different day, actually. I, um, I, I don't know, my brain was kind of fried yesterday and I decided maybe I should just unplug and sleep on it. Uh, one of the best things I learned when I was in uh, music school was um, that sometimes it's just better to step away and get a good night's rest and then come back the next day. I mean, I, I remember I used to like practice piano and get so frustrated because um, I would try to, you know, learn how to play some classical piece of music and it just wouldn't click and I was like banging my head against the wall like trying to figure out like do it over and over and over and just wouldn't wouldn't happen and then I would just stop practicing go get good night's rest come back the next day and magically it was there so so I figure well you know like let's let's try the same approach with um, with Houdini and this stuff so um, let me show you a little bit like where we were where I left off yesterday. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so, this is what I rendered um, after doing a bunch of kind of adjustments and stuff like that to my textures for the ground. We're still just working on the ground. We haven't even moved to the buildings yet. We have so much to do. You have no idea. Uh, and it's okay. I mean, it looks I don't know, it looks okay, I guess. I mean, it's, you know, it's like varied and resolution is high enough and it's got like some some interesting kind of, uh, you know, displacement and textures and stuff like that, but I don't know, it's just not really doing it for me. It's, um, I think I'm thinking about it too hard, that's the problem. Uh, I mean, also, when I refer back to my you know, reference image here. Um, I don't know, this feels different. This this honestly feels more deserty to me than it does, um, you know, the, the, like, yeah, it, it just looks more deserty than, than, than this. It really does. It kind of feels like it should be more sandy. Uh, I mean, it's definitely got like some different kind of texture going on here, but but these like big plains, they feel like they should be more sandy to me. I don't know, this is like a desert planet. There's a couple of like very, very specific challenges about this particular image that we're trying to recreate. That I'm trying to recreate. You guys probably like, it's like, why would you do that? But whatever. That's what I picked. Uh, the biggest challenge is that it's very flat. Okay, this is a very, very flat expanse of land. So because of that, I can't really use uh, rock formations or other uh, 
you know, like um, extrusions or other stuff like that to kind of hide my repetition. Uh, the other challenge is that like right here, this is very close to the camera, so we need high resolution close to the camera. We need to see this ground in a way that doesn't look all pixelated, okay? At the same time, we have a really, really long throw for our vista. Like, you know, we're going down miles and miles and that induces tiling because we're not just seeing what's close uh, nearby, we're actually seeing stuff that's shooting off into the distance and this is basically like a bit of a deadly combination because I can't really hide the tiling and um, you know and it's it just kinda like all of the tricks that you know people normally resort to whenever they're trying to do uh, you know this type of panoramic sort of CG um, shots we can't really use in this particular shot so, so we need to figure out a solution that allows us to basically have all three of those things working for us. One, that we get nice crisp textures close to the camera. One, that we avoid tiling in the distance. And, um, and three, that we are not resorting to heavy displacement or other, uh, you know, like rocks and stuff like that to kind of break up that tiling. So on that note, uh, let's go back to square one. So I'm gonna put this aside. I'm just gonna drag, uh, option and drag to make a copy of it. And this is gonna be called version two. And uh, I'm just gonna change this. I'm just gonna say point it to version two. Okay, cool. So basically that's, that's where we left off. And as I said, it's, it's okay, it's just not really doing it for me. Uh, so let's go into uh, material number two and uh, let's, let's get rid of all this stuff. And uh, as a matter of fact, let's get rid of all my displacement. Let's just go back to the sand. I think that that's what I need to do uh, because when I look at my three different materials that I uh, downloaded, um, I think this red gravel is not necessary. Uh, I'm going to allow the lighting to actually color uh, the sand and give it more of this uh, auburn, orangey, red type of vibe um, as opposed to actually using a material that has that built in. Uh, so we got sand, so that's kind of nice. How are we going to fix this? Because I need more resolution, I need more repetition. I have this white vista and um, you know, I need to fix this issue because otherwise I don't have my ground. So uh, the way I engage it, I just click on this tile removal button right here and do the same thing with my roughness. I want to remove the, so that it matches. Uh, so that's good. And then the other thing that I want to do is now that I'm using this tile removal, now I can pump this guy back in. Uh, on my UVs and change my UV to be a lot tighter and you can see that I'm still keeping my resolution I mean we're pretty damn close and the stuff still looks good I mean you can kinda see I don't know if you can kinda see some of these details right here this crack uh, like we're really really close to the ground right now and it's it's looking good I mean it's it's high resolution enough for my taste yeah I mean I, I'm not I don't know about you guys I'm, I'm really not seeing any tiling I mean to me this this looks good and as I said we're really really close to the ground right now so um, so there you go I mean I gotta tell you like 3d light just for the tile removal um, option, I don't know, like I think that's that's the killer app for me. Well, especially if you're doing this kind of stuff. We have the sand, we have this sandy surface. We got that covered. But then there is this portion right here that looks like it's like a darker, you know, maybe more volcanic something, you know, there's... Uh, I mean, it definitely looks like it's a, it's a different type of mineral deposit on, on this, 
you know, this particular portion of the surface. Let's try a different technique because I want to be able to control things a little bit better. Okay, uh, I'm not going to be able to control them 100%, at least not at this level, uh, but uh, I could probably define a little bit more where it is that I want this dark sand versus the light sand, okay? Because I'm trying, I, I like, there, there's several things going on in this image, but you know, like these darker kind of features are actually kind of leading your eye towards the city. And as a matter of fact, this little almost looks like a path right down the middle of, of sand is also kind of, you know, a pointer that is kind of guiding our eye um, towards this entire composition. So how are we going to do that? Uh, let's go to our geometry, our ground. So we got our ground and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint some attributes where I want this dark sand to be. And then I'm going to use those attributes to tell uh, 3D light where to use one texture versus another. Uh, th there's a note called attributes paint. Right here, let me just type paint. Paint attributes, that's what it's called. Or attribute paint. What's the difference? It's probably the same thing. Paint attributes. So with this paint attributes, uh, I have access to uh, basically a paintbrush that I can, uh, if I hold down shift, I can make the radius a lot larger. Here, let's make the radius because we're, we're dealing remember we're dealing like a really really huge scene so let's make it 500 meters uh, so there's my brush and if I click now you'll see what's going on okay the problem is that an attribute paint works on the resolution of the geometry and right now we have a very very low resolution grid it's just like 10 polygons by 10 polygons uh, what I need is more geometry, more polygons on this grid. So let's do that by, before our attribute paints, I'm gonna do a subdivide node. Let's go six. It's, it looks crazy, but it's, it's really only about 330,000 polygons. That sounds like a huge number, but it really isn't. I mean, Houdini can easily handle, like, you know, millions of polygons in the viewport. 3D Light, being a CPU renderer, can handle millions and millions of polygons on render time. But after we have this, we can put like another node and we can reduce the polygons because at that point we don't really need them anymore. We just need them for, for our attributes. And once we capture the attributes, uh, we I think we can uh, down convert the polygons. But I'm not going to worry about it because as I said, um, 330,000 polygons is... I mean, Houdini can eat this for breakfast. Um, however, I want to be able to do it in such a way that I can kind of reference our image, this guy. Because at least I want to have a rough idea of what is it that the camera is seeing, right? So that, that I can kind of somewhat paint according to... Like, it's never going to be exact, right? I mean, I'm not going to be able to, like, replicate this drawing um, exactly. I mean, you know. Uh, but, at least I want to be in the general ballpark, because I do like this composition as a whole. So, uh, what I like to do is I'm going to hit Command 2, and that's going to split my viewport into two, okay? And I want to have, make sure that you have the render cam selected on one of the split views. So this is going to tell me what the camera is seeing, okay? On this right viewport right here, uh, I actually want to see a, not a perspective, but I want to see a top-down. Okay, so here's, I don't know if you can see it, here's my camera right here. And, and this is my landscape. So now that I have this, here I'm going to make this, there's an attributes tab right here. And right now it's just called mask, which is right, but uh, I'm just gonna put like an under slash and a one uh, just because I might actually use multiple masks I don't know yet probably not but let's just give it mask one for now and um, a little bit like uh, let's let's start from 
kind of this side maybe something like that and I'm just gonna continue it over here even though we don't really see it but I'm just assuming that this dark sand continues off to the right I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller for this so maybe maybe somewhere around here Now we're done, for reals. So let's go back to our single screen, Command-1, and let's go back to my proper view, which is Spacebar-1, my perspective view, okay? Here we go. And we can kind of shrink this guy down, and we can take a little bit better look here at what we're doing. So, okay, so we have the attribute, uh, I call the attribute mask under slash one. And, and as I said, I mean, it's, it's kind of allowing me to art direct a little bit better where, uh, so that I can use this mask specifically for the sections where I want uh, my dark sand to be. So this is, uh, this is what we were working with, our sand. And um, what 3D Light has is a utility node the utilities it's called attribute read and redshift has something very similar I don't know offhand because it's been a while since I use redshift but same difference same difference usually like whenever you bring attributes into a render uh, shading environment what ends up happening is that this defaults to CD um, which is color diffuse that's what CD stands for um, but we don't want to use the color diffuse, we want to use our attribute that we called mask under slash one. Remember? So how do we know that we're reading the right attribute? Well, let's uh, let's put it into the color. So uh, I'm just gonna cut all these guys out for now, and I'm just gonna go out of color into my color. So if I zoom out, look at this. Look what we got. Right? That's what we drew exactly what we drew. This looks okay, but I would like for it to feel a little bit more organic. I think that it's a little, I don't know, looks like marshmallow. <laughs> it's very regular, right? I'm gonna grab one of, my, one of my grungy, one of my grungy maps. Not this one though. Maybe this guy. What does this guy look like? Yeah, I like this guy. So now that we have our attribute to get us in the ballpark, I can maybe use this grungy texture to make our regions feel a little bit more organic and a little bit more natural the way that the wind in the desert would have shaped this, right? Because the wind would have not made everything look quite as regular as this marshmallowy looking thing. So we have this guy, and we have this guy. And we want to mix them together. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a utility uh, float blend. 
What it takes is uh, an input from uh, a foreground element, like this guy, it takes an input from a background element, like this guy, and blends them together into something sensible. So um, right now we're only seeing the top layer and that's because if I, uh, if I change the factor then you'll see the bottom layer. Okay, and if I put them to 0.5 we'll see a little bit of both. And you might think, okay, done, we're done, you can go home. No, nope, we're not done because this is not what I want at all. What I want is I want to be able to drive my attributes values with the grungy texture so that my attribute values will look more grungy and more natural and not so marshmallowy. So in order to do that, I'm going to put the factor back over, is I just need to change the blend mode. And we can use multiply and you'll see a little bit what starts happening with multiply. So that kind of gets me a little bit in the ballpark, right? So what we're seeing here is that um, only my attribute positive values are getting uh, affected by my grungy texture, okay? So we now have this kind of noisy sort of thing. Uh, but let's see, what, what else we have? Uh, over, as I said, it's just like, it's just like a basic blend mix. So we don't want that. We have Multiply. We have Darken. Let's see what Darken does. Darken is... Eh, not... It's giving me the worst of both worlds. Uh, we have Color Burn. Uh, Color Burn is a little bit better, but it's eating a lot into it. I suppose I could kind of use this guy to scale it back, but yeah, I don't like Color Burn. Then we have Add, and Add is simply adding the values from both maps together. Uh, I definitely don't want that. That's basically the equivalent of using over and doing a half value, so that's not good. Uh, screen is very similar to add, so I don't want screen either. We have lighten, uh, I don't know, I think lighten is basically like add and screen. We have dodge, uh, dodge is kind of interesting, uh, maybe, I don't know. We'll, we'll keep it in mind. We have overlay, uh, overlay is really, really similar to multiply, honestly. What's the difference? Uh, overlay is a little bit lighter. And then we have soft light. Soft light is not bueno. We have hard light, which is definitely not good. Add subtract. Don't like that one. Subtract is not great. Difference is not great. And divide is definitely not good. So. Yeah, I think dodge is better. I was using soft light, but I couldn't quite get it. And then I switched back to dodge again. And I switched off my inversion. And I think dodge is a little bit closer to what I want. It really is. It's given me a little bit more of this, you know, more natural. I, th I think I just need to maybe adjust the values a little bit uh, too much so to recap we've gone from this marshmallow looking thing to this uh, you know what I don't even need this remap I really don't I think this is fine I might put like a remap afterwards just to kind of fine-tune the mask overall uh, I can certainly do that uh, but not before. I think this is fine. This is fine for what we need. Let's see if it works, right? Because uh, I mean, we've gotten this far, but we don't really know. I'm just gonna call this light sand, and I'm gonna call this dark sand. All right, cool. Uh, so what I'm gonna use is a blend node, uh, a color blend, because those are colors now. Okay. So, uh, foreground, background, put this guy in my main color, and now we just see the sand. If I change this to this, then we'll see just the dark sand. Light sand, dark sand, and if I put them in half, it's kind of blend up two. But, once again, I don't want to do that. I want to be able to drive them with the mask that I spent the past 40 minutes 
creating. So let's do that. Uh, so here's my attribute mask that I created. I put this into my blend. And look at that. Now we have something. Now we have something. So we have uh, basically basically the opposite of what I want. We have like light sand uh, in the spots that I painted and then we have like this dark sand in the other spots. So this is not good. Uh, but it's easily fixable. All I have to do is just swap the places. One and two. Okay, so now, um, yeah, now this is a lot closer to what it is that I want. Look at that. So uh, let's let's get there. Let's let's just get you know be done with this whole ground material once and for all. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna put my uh, roughness back into where it needs to be. Hold on, let's organize stuff. Dark sand here, color blend, blah. And the mask right here. And then I'm gonna take my roughness and displacement maps, bring those guys in here, put the roughness into roughness, put the displacement into displacement, maybe refresh my IPR just to be on the safe side. I just want to be able to adjust a little bit like where this dark sand is versus uh, where the white sand is. And I'm just gonna take my mask result and I'm just gonna put like a um, remap node, which as I've said many many times is the equivalent of the ramp node in um, Redshift. And uh, we got the output of the float, out of the float, and let's just kind of mess with it and see a little bit if I can bring back. All right, so now I'm actually eroding the black sand, but actually I want more dark sand in that lower corner, so let's go the opposite. Okay, we're starting to get there. Just for shits and giggles, what if I'm just using my original attribute mask to drive? Okay, so that's where we were. I'm gonna put a remap for this guy too. I, I just want like this extra, as much flexibility as possible. So, no. I think it's pretty close to what I want. Maybe let's do something just to kind of make it slightly more interesting but not go crazy. So why don't we add like a little mountain node. Let's see what happens. I just want to use it very very sparingly. I just want to add a little bit of just some slight movement to to the land. Um, just Just a little bit. But I can't see what the hell I'm doing, so I'm just gonna shoot this up a hundred. Let's make it even like five hundred. So this this is crazy looking. So this is the frequency is way too high. So what I want is I mean this looks crazy. Uh I want to make the element size a little bit bigger. Let's try one hundred. Okay, it's still too busy. I just want like very very gentle slopes, very 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 gentle. So let's try 500. Uh, it still looks a little too crazy. Let's try a thousand. Okay, I think this might work. Now, obviously, my uh, height is too high right now, but I mean, if I bring this down to something like five, maybe, or maybe even ten. So there's like a little bit of movement. Uh, this is probably too much. At a hundred, uh, I mean, it's like a hundred meters. So this is way too crazy. Let's make it. Uh, let's make it fifty. Go to our out node and fire up our render, renderer. But as I said, this is way too high. I mean, this is. I, I don't want it to be this hilly. I really don't. 
So uh, let's go back into our ground. Uh, let's make this 25. Uh, okay, I mean, yeah, it's just that a little bit of movement. Just, just a hair. Just makes it, it's still flat. It's still very, very flat, but it's, it's just a little more interesting. That's all, you know, that's all we're trying to do. Cause, cause nothing is a real flat plane in nature. It just doesn't exist. Okay. So, I say we are done with the ground. After 10 hours and 2 days, we're finally done with this ground. I think this is, this is good. Let's look at our first building. So, we don't have any material for it. So, let's make a material. Uh, I'm just going to do material builder. 3D lights material builder that is and call it building one just to differentiate it from building two, three, and four. Just throw a principle down there and color surface. Just gonna give it a crazy color just so that I know that it's working. Go under here on the render. Material, building one, accepts. And it's bright green, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we obviously don't want a green building, but at least we know that it's working. So if I change this to, I don't know, some sort of light gray material. It's kind of cool. Darker, light gray. I, mean, I don't think we really need to do a whole lot. Uh, do we have UVs on this? That's, that's always a good question to ask whenever you're working with something that you want to add textures to. It's like, do we have UVs? Uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the UV status. And the way we do it is with the visualize UVs. Boom. Put this down to one. So we have UVs. Yeah. We got UVs. Uh, I don't know how good they are, but they are something. So, because we have UVs, uh, maybe we can kind of map some texture over it. Um, but, now, um, these these guys actually come with textures. I mean, let's take a look here. I mean, this is what this stuff comes, this is what this comes with, basically. This is the Kitbash 3D textures. You just have this generic kind of concrete. There's a normal for it. There's this guy. I don't know. It, it all looks just like this generic concrete kind of stuff. Uh, I don't think that this is usable. Nah. Plus, from this distance, we're not going to see any detail anyway. I mean, I can kind of slap like some generic concrete on it and you just... It, it won't make a difference, it really won't. Uh, however, what if we put some lights on it? What if we put, like, there's people living in it? I know that the drawing, I know that this drawing doesn't really have any lights in these buildings, but, but, you know, it's a city. People live in cities. So I think. I think there should be some apartment buildings and stuff. So here's what I have. I'm, I'm going to show you. I made this myself, but but if you watch my Jace placement tutorial, or you should, um, you can basically make something very similar in Jace placement. So, and what this is is I went to textures.com, and I. Um, basically purchased a bunch of windows, nighttime windows, and I just kind of arranged them on an 8K texture square. And um, and I have like different kind of versions of this. This is like the most sparse one, which I think is what I need for this particular one. But for instance, I have this guy that is a lot busier. So 
it's just kind of like a, I literally just kind of copied and pasted a bunch of these kind of uh, nighttime windows kind of stuff and um, and this comes in really really handy when you're doing cityscapes and uh, I'm actually gonna make a tutorial probably similar to this about cityscapes um, but anyway as I said I mean you can do the same exact thing uh, using Jace placement uh, Jace placement is gonna give you something closer to this so it's not gonna have like the actual windows it's just gonna be more like uh, dots but uh, but the result is basically the same so so for my intents and purposes I'm gonna use the one that I made myself but as I said if you fire up Jace placements it will it will work so I'm gonna pump it into my um, incandescence multiplier and you're not gonna see anything because my incandescence is set to black if I change that to white uh, you might start seeing something. Let me put the intensity at 100 so we can... Ooh, look at that. Okay, so basically we have lights look at that, in our building. Uh, I think the problem is that we have too many. So maybe let's make this 0 0.5 and 0.5. About... 0.25 and 0.25 uh, let's go 0.5 and 0.5 on my UV repetition but let's go back here and maybe like put the intensity down and that should kind of tame it a little bit like our kind of make it 25 yeah yeah, I like that. I mean, it's like, I don't know, this kind of weird colored lights in the far distance. Um, but I'm also going to make the the building color, the, the color that this building, I'm going to make a lot darker. Maybe not quite that dark. So cool. So this is um, building one. I mean, if I really, really wanted to, I could put like a displacement map on it just to make it that much crazier but I don't think I need to because once again like uh, looking at this stuff I mean I, I don't know maybe I am not gonna worry about it I'm not so let's put a second building and what what happens if we put the same exact um, material that we use for building one onto building two. This works. I mean, I, I sometimes it's possible to just spend so much time on this minutia that doesn't really make that big of a difference. So I'm just going to put the same material on all of those buildings. And I think the fact that they're rotated and they're like different scales and stuff like that, I think that's going to be, uh, it's going to make them feel different enough, I think. And they're like different shapes and like, you know, people, you know, interpret it. Like, I mean, there's, there's something that happens when you're looking at a kind of semi-realistic CG kind of thing. Um, that I think um, allows your mind to fill in the realism that isn't there because your brain wants to interpret images as being real okay so even if something looks a little bit off your brain will sometimes make up that difference now this lower building right here that we just added um, this guy right here I'm not crazy about how the lights are falling on it because they seem too sparse for this type of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a second material and um, instead of calling it building 1 and building 2, I'm going to call it building A and building B just because we're using these on 
different numbered buildings and um, and I don't want to confuse it so that building one is only building one but uh, but right now we're talking about this guy building five and building five I'm gonna give it instead of building a I'm gonna give it building B why am I doing that because I actually want to go into building B and change the UV for my um, for my lights and uh, make them maybe a little bit more uh, uh, repeatable so let's try one and one that's a little bit better what about like two and two here let me let me do something to help you guys out I'm going to switch to my work cam I'm gonna start the IPR and now well, come back here and now we can kinda see a little bit better what in the world is going on okay this sh this should make it a lot easier for you guys to see what I'm seeing because we can now zoom into our various buildings so uh, yeah I mean that's kinda cool might have a building C in there somewhere too let's do building B uh, building 10 I like this guy I like that that it's everything is very curvy and this one is kind of more square so it's kind of cool uh, building A building B eh, let's make it building A so we, we have two different color I might make a building C maybe two okay this guy is really really low so let's see building A I think it's gonna require building B eh, building A is not bad Uh, drag and drop let's call this building C and what I'm gonna do with building C is just make the color a little bit lighter maybe like so and change this to building C and it should be a little bit lighter lighter but I want it to be darker than the other ones so I really like that. Okay. And maybe we'll make building D as well. I mean, I'm just literally just messing around until I see something that looks interesting, that's all. Uh, this guy's over here. Let's try building A. Try building B, or let's try building D. That's cool. Uh, these guys, where are we? Oh, it's right here. Oh, interesting. It's on. It's on top of it. Let me move it. Like that. Uh huh. Let's give it building A. I might copy and paste some of these um, these guys, but for the most part, they're working for me. Okay, let's call it done for now. I think we've gone long enough on textures. Um, so. Let's call this the end of part two, and uh, I might kind of revisit some stuff a little bit later on, but uh, for right now, I think we've reached a good point on textures and uh, covered plenty. So in the next part, I'm going to be covering creating the clouds, because clouds are a prominent feature of you know this particular scene, and I think I need to spend some time on getting some cool looking clouds. So on that note, thank you for watching, and see you soon.